Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's Amin here on the Mind Heist podcast, episode 68. And this is not about corona, coronavirus, COVID 19. This episode is about something much bigger picture, something that, inshallah, we will take with us beyond. Uh, this current phenomenon uh, and I think that's what this podcast has always been about it's not been about trending topics it's not been about stuff that is here one week one month one uh, quarter and it's gone uh, it's stuff that you know it's mindset it's uh, the constant struggle it's uh, yeah the, the attitude towards life that's kind of always what we're talking about it's principles it's traditions that inshallah are kind of all encompassing okay so what is this episode about i mean it's it's just some thoughts really it's some thoughts that like i said is much bigger picture than the current phenomenon um that that we're seeing everywhere okay so just some reflections from myself really um the other day uh, obviously as you know uh, I live in the UAE and a few days ago now, a couple of days ago actually, uh, I, I was praying Aisha at the masjid and you know we finished praying, praying our sunnah, doing dhikr, everything and I was just finishing actually, I was praying witr, okay, I was praying witr and there were only you know 10 people left in the masjid or something and the imam rushes back in, he jumps on the microphone and he just reads off an announcement. Uh, I guess he got it from the Awqaf, from the uh, Ministry of uh, Islamic Affairs kind of thing and, and endowments. And, you know, man, I, I, I lost my concentration because this is a pretty unusual for someone to just jump on the mic. Um, so I'm in the middle of Salah and as I'm reading Witr, you know, the last raka'ah of, of the night, um, he jumps on the mic, he says, from now on there will be no salah in the masjid no salah normal salah no five daily prayers no jumu'ah and at that point i knew this is my last uh, raka'ah for who knows when and he said you know this is going to be until further notice basically we don't know when so honestly when i finished that that raka'ah i i was alhamdulillah i guess a good sign but but i was really kind of upset to be honest um and and you know, you know, twenty thirty minutes later, I just really felt like, wow, like my daily routine is completely changed. I, I kind of felt like my whole life had changed, right? And I just thought this is a an act of worship, which you know we, you know, we struggle to do. Yani, I don't mean struggle like it's hard. I just mean we put effort in to do this, and now it's actually been barred from us. You know, it's been taken away from us, and it it made me really realize that worship is a privilege you know not everybody is given the privilege to worship Allah you know just how alhamdulillah I was given the privilege to worship Allah praying in the masjid there are other forms of worship that I've been uh, you know denied you know uh, whether it is uh, uh, an opportunity to give charity whether it's an opportunity to do better by my parents uh, whether it's an opportunity to get closer to my neighbors there are all types of worship that we know are great in the eyes of Allah and yeah, and the fact that we're not doing them it means we for, for the moment at least we've been denied that privilege okay so you know just keeping thinking about privilege you know um, the biggest privilege is to be able to worship Allah and uh, Allah doesn't treat people equally uh, when it comes to the privilege to worship him um, obviously Allah knows what's in everyone's hearts Allah knows everyone's intentions and so he offers this privilege to those who are deserving of it right and so if right now you know you're able to pray and you're able to believe in Allah and, and have a certain level of yaqeen of certainty in Allah in the in the, in the, the, the Quran the truth of the Quran and, and the day of judgment then alhamdulillah that is that is a great privilege it's a privilege and um if you know there are certain acts of worship that you just haven't been doing you you're neglectful of then know that this is something where 
Allah has at this moment uh, not given you the success, given you the ability to succeed in that in that uh, act of worship, right? Um, but inshallah, with du'a, with sincerity, Allah opens doors. Allah opens doors, right? And so it just gave me, really made me think, like, wow, like, I I just got shut off, and everyone everyone around me is now shut off from this great act of of ibad, and it just made me think of like. How many times in the Quran uh, does it say wa aqim salah wa aqim salah wa aqim salah establish the prayer that's how it's translated right and i know that you know one level or one way uh, of the prayer being actually established not just doing the prayer or or praying but establishing the prayer it's it's to have it in the masjid you know, it's to have the adhan calling, and then to have the iqama, and then to have an imam, and then to have uh, people following the imam and praying in jama'ah. You know, the jama'ah is so important in Islam. Um, obviously, it's, a, it's an obligation on, on the men, and uh, it's something that mu must happen, even if it's a small jama'ah. So the fact that there's no jama'ah now is, is kind of crazy, and... Yeah, it just really made me think that this was a privilege in the first place. It was a privilege in the first It made me think of, like, what about those times when I didn't go to the masjid, right? Uh, the, you know, those times when we haven't we haven't done these these acts of worship, we haven't gone to the masjid, and now we can't. Like, even if we want to, we can't. So it's definitely a privilege, and uh, also made me reflect on uh, previously, you know, uh, a few weeks ago when Umrah was, was closed off, you know, uh, People, foreigners coming into Saudi Arabia um, when were no longer allowed to do Umrah. And then eventually even uh, Saudis or residents in, in the country were not allowed to do Umrah. So again, it's a door closed, a door closed. And, you know, had had you happen, had Allah given you the, the uh, tawfiq to book your Umrah a few weeks earlier, then you would have, that door would have been open. You know, you would have done it, but... But some people, the door was closed on them. Uh, also, Hajj is, you know, coming up in a few months. Uh, I don't know what the situation will be then, but I'm, I'm feeling, I'm guessing that Hajj might be, you know, cancelled or the number. To be honest, I don't know, but I really am le leaning towards guessing that Hajj is off. And so it made me think about going to Hajj and uh, how many people are able to go Hajj and they put it off you know every year there's a different excuse right and it's easy to do right it's easy to do but ultimately now there's no Hajj this year you know let's say there's no Hajj so last year you said oh I have this excuse I'll go next year this year uh, you know coronavirus you, you can't go even if you want to you can't go and then a year later you know Will you still be around? So, you know, these acts of worship are, are, are a privilege. And then if we look further, we, we look at Ramadan, we think of Ramadan, we think of Tarawih. Will there be Tarawih? I mean, I'm guessing there will not be Tarawih this year. Obviously, depending on the country. Some countries, alhamdulillah, they don't really have much of an issue, but many countries, there will not be Tarawih. Um, now, think about it, you know. That's what I was wondering is, think about it to yourself. What would you have done last Ramadan if you knew that there would be no Tarawih this year? Let's say you're in a masjid where they're praying 20 rak'ah. Would you, maybe maybe you're leaving after 8 or leaving after 10 or 12 or whatever. Um, would you not have stayed longer? You know, just knowing that this year, like, there will be no Tarawih. It's kind of, kind of crazy to think about it. And, and yeah, like I said, what, what does it mean if, if Allah stops us from worship? If Allah closed the door for a big amount of people to worship? It just reminds you really that, yes, it is a privilege to worship Allah. Uh, and we could go into why, you know, why it's a privilege and, and all of that. Uh, I, I don't feel like I can really express it very eloquently, but uh, I'm sure other people can. Uh, just, just, I don't know, to summarize, if you like... Um, in the end, Allah owns us. Allah created us, uh, and we are Allah's slaves. So we we worship Allah because He told us to worship Him, and the the Master tells the slave what to do. Right? 
and alhamdulillah Allah is the best master because he's the only master where he creates you he tells you exactly what to do to get his pleasure and then he rewards you for that whereas Allah doesn't need to reward us think about it it's like I mean obviously yeah? like we're not we're not saying Allah is like this but just imagine the analogy right uh, a slave master he's got his slaves and his slave master and he's paying them wages like why would he pay wages like he's got the slaves he owns them right that's what he thinks he owns them and they work for him and if they don't work he'll uh, punish them or he'll uh, kill them or whatever you know or he'll sell them on to another slave master right um, as for our master he allows us to live you know many people uh, live a comfortable life and even if you don't live a comfortable life he gives you the chance for reward at the end when you die you can go to Jannah you can go to Jannah I mean sometimes you just wonder like why like Allah doesn't need to do that but this is this is the manifestation of the the great attributes of Allah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim etc so having said that why when it comes to this virus you know by the way on a little bit of a side note I would advise everyone jump off social media jump off these news websites they are loving it on honestly they're drooling at this uh, uh pandemic they're they're drooling the the advertising dollars are coming in the clicks the impressions are rolling in rolling in like never before people are just browsing and browsing and you know there's something about our psychology that that really allow makes us so curious and want to know more and more and more and and do nothing much with it so if I were you, I'd just like block these things, like block the apps or whatever it is, uh, at least for a couple of weeks, because it's going to do you more damage than good, right? But having said that, why do we fear Corona, right? If you fear Corona, if you if you're worried and if you're hearing about what what it what it can do to you and what it could do to your elderly parents or something like that, why do you fear it? And then on the flip side. If you're young and you've heard that young people tend to just recover from it, why do we? Why do you feel safe from it? Oh, is it because, you know, you heard that, you know, if you get it, it's most likely just going to be a like a fever, and you're going to recover, you know, and you're going to go on with your life, right? Like before, right? Is that, is that what you're thinking? I mean, I'm I'm certainly went across my mind th these thoughts, but but then I also thought like wow like why am i why am i like feel why do i feel relieved that oh i'm not gonna get it oh okay i'm not gonna die and then i'm like wait i am gonna die so this uh, this element of are you gonna get it you're not gonna get it if you do get it uh, how severe will it be uh will you get you know if you if it becomes severe will you get saved is there enough uh, hospital beds all of that this is all just delaying death you know and so think about it like this whole thing of i'll be fine i'm young or whatever uh all that means is that your death might be delayed but your death is coming it's just a matter of a few hours a few days a few years until until we're gone until we're gone and so what does that mean if if, if basically what we're looking we're either lying to ourselves saying that we're not gonna die right or you know we, we bury the idea we're gonna die either that or we're just saying look let me delay it just a few more weeks a few more years just delay de delay delay death delay death right why delay death what for right because we know we're returning to Allah so why delay death all oh, to do more good deeds okay good good so what what with that thought in, in our minds we want to delay death we want to prolong our life to serve Allah and to feel that when we're meeting Allah we're in a better state that at that time than now okay good so let's prepare so let's prepare let's let's live our life as as much as possible in a way where we can feel at rest when we die so that if we got corona if we got in a car crash whatever I'm pretty sure by the way you're more likely to die in a car crash than corona but whatever uh, that's neither here nor there so we want to delay death so we can worship Allah and meet Allah in a better state so let's prepare for that how do we 
prepare. And it, it made me think like this 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 pandemic came and it stopped us from going to masjid, it stopped people going to Hajj, it stopped um durus from happening, it stopped, you know, Hifd al Quran, you know, classes where people are memorizing the Quran. It stopped um even people flying to visit their families. It stopped some people having access to scholars to ask for tawa. It made me it made me really feel vulnerable in the sense where like now I can't fly anywhere. Like if you don't have access to like a mufti or you know, let's say the internet went down, it's like you're on your own, like fatwa wise, Islamic guidance wise, um you're on your own. Right? So it made me feel vulnerable in that sense, like when am I going to be competent to to kind of find my own guidance, you know, in, in terms of not give other people fatawa, but for my own needs. If I come in that situation where I need to make a decision what's best for my akhirah, that I'm semi able to do that. Like what is why am why do I not have that ability yet? I'm delaying that and delaying that. And so you delay it until the day comes when you can't go and ask a fatwa, you can't go on Islam QA, you can't do this, you can't do that. And you know, this this obviously is what the tests are for, and this is what uh, calamities or whatever it's for. It's, it's for to humble us and make us realize how weak we are. So, having said the whole thing about delaying death, so that we can uh, do better, do better by Allah, and die uh, in a better state than we're on we're in now. Basically, before the time comes, whether it's in a few hours, like yes, like we could die in a few hours. Allah irhamna, yeah. Uh, whether it's in a few hours, a few weeks, a few years, we need to prepare now, and we need to kind of hasten. This, what I feel like, is a, an, a sense of urgency to hasten towards good deeds because you don't know when you're going to die. Okay, and I just want to share some some ayat from for for you on this topic of hastening. So Allah says in in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, ayah one hundred and forty-eight, "Aadhu billahi min rajim وَلِكُلِّمْ وِجْهَةٌ هُوَ مَوَالِيهَا فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يَأْتِي بِكُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ So Allah says فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ The translation of this uh, ayah is For each religious following is a direction towards it faces Okay, this is the Qibla, yes? So race to all that is good that is the part I'm emphasizing here. First, debiqul khayrat, race towards all that is good. Wherever you may be, Allah will bring you forth for judgment altogether. Indeed, Allah is competent over all things. Yeah. So, first, debiqul khayrat, rush, hurry towards doing good. Right. Whatever good you you find, rush towards it. Uh, another ayah, which is one of my favorite ayat in the Quran. In Surah Al Imran, starting from uh, Ayah 133, Allah says, وَسَارِعُوا <laughs> وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ this translates to and hasten to the, to forgiveness from your Lord and a garden as wide as the heavens and earth prepared for the righteous, for the muttaqeen. Those who spend in the cause of Allah during ease and hardship and who restrain anger and who pardon the people. And Allah loves the doers of good, the muhsini. And those who when they commit an immorality or wrong themselves, they remember Allah and they seek forgiveness for their sins. And who can forgive sins except Allah? And who and who do not persist in what they have done while they while they know, while they're conscious? For those, their reward is forgiveness from their Lord and gardens beneath which rivers flow in paradise, wherein they will live eternally 
and excellent is the reward of the righteous workers. And I like this bit, the righteous workers. Allah says, الْعَامِلِينَ The ones who work, the ones who do, the doers. Okay, so the, these are kind of ayat which emphasize, uh, I wanted to emphasize the first ayah in this kind of passage. Allah says, وَسَارِعُ And hasten. وَسَارِعُ إِلَى مَغْفِرَةً Hasten towards the forgiveness of Allah. Or how do we get the forgiveness of Allah? Um, well, uh, then Allah obviously is, is as, as Allah usually does, He might give something uh, general like this, وَسَارِعُ إِلَى مَغْفِرَةً Go towards the forgiveness. Yeah. How do we get that? Well, uh, then the next ayah, Allah will, uh, goes into detail. How do you do that? الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ Those who give, who spend in the cause of Allah in hardship and in ease. And they control their anger and they forgive people, etc., etc. Right? So then Allah gives the kind of... Um, the attributes of these people, right? So you, you could check the A out for yourself. So this is again Allah telling us to hasten, right? And then of course in, in Surah Al-Waqi'ah as well, um, uh, I, I believe this is uh, the description of the Sahaba, but in many different ayat Allah mentions As-Sabiqoon. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ Yeah, so Sabiqun, uh, those who are racing towards goodness, racing. Okay. Now you might think, when it comes to hastening towards good, like I can't do everything, like all the possible good things, I can't do it. Either I'll run out of energy, of time, of whatever, right? And that's a very good point, and that's something that I always uh, keep in mind. And that's why uh, for the for the last part of this podcast, I just wanted to mention a few kind of practicalities of, of how do we hasten but then also not burn out and the the answer to that i would say is very simple and it, you, you know you can summarize it in one word and that is habits okay habits so instead of aiming to achieve some great feat in your life um, aim to have a daily life which is pleasing to allah let me repeat that again instead of aiming to achieve some great glorious feat in your life achievement in your life instead try and live a a lifestyle a day-to-day lifestyle which is pleasing to allah okay so every day hasten every day hasten towards a certain few good deeds that they it becomes something that you're known for by the angels Every day they're writing that this guy prayed this this guy did this dhikr this guy did this uh, read this quran this Obviously, I'm saying guy, but that's for everyone. Yeah, make your habit so consistent that this is your thing. This is your thing that, inshallah, because of this, Allah will have mercy on you, right? Um, so, ha- habits, how do we establish habits? I mean, first, you got to start slow, right? Depending where you are. Uh, obviously, something like uh, praying five times a day, that's, that's something to kind of get straight on, right? But I'm, I'm assuming you're doing the basic obligations. Um, habits uh, the first I would say to start is reading the Quran every single day how do we do that well you need to define for yourself a certain time uh, duration that you're going to read the Quran so let's say um, 10 minutes a day right so I will I'll read 10 minutes of Quran every single day and then you just need to define a time that you will do it and link this reading of the Quran with a, something you already do so what I used to do, um, because I try to relate it to how people generally live their lives, is when I was working uh, in London, I would go uh, commute, right? Like like many people do. I would commute. It was about an hour commute there and back. And that was my time when I would read my Quran. So because I'm already going to do my commute already, it's already an established habit, I just attached this new habit of reading Quran onto that existing habit. And so the it never slips your mind, you know, it never you, do, you never like don't find the time because you're already commuting or you're already doing that thing. And so you just attach it. Another example is uh, when you finish praying dhuhr, then you read a Quran. Another example is um, let's say you have to leave your house at uh, 8 a.m. to get to work on time then uh, at quarter to eight you start reading your Quran right that's a bit of a iffy one because it's better to do after the habit rather than before but it can work 
Um, and then it could be after Fajr again. Uh, after Fajr, I finish Fajr, uh, praying Fajr, and right there and then where I am, sitting uh, in the masjid or uh, on my prayer mat or whatever at home, uh, the Quran is right there and I go and I read. Yeah. So establish good habits. Uh, make the, the first one to establish, I would say, is reading Quran every single day. And um, uh, measure it by a time duration. So don't say I'm going to read five pages because if you're slow at reading and you, it's, you find it difficult to read, then those five pages might take you long and it might feel long and it might feel like you want to rush through it. Whereas if you just do a countdown timer on your phone for 10 minutes, if you're slow or if, you, if you're slow because you're, you're not that good at reading um, or if you're slow because you just wanted to ponder and repeat certain verses again and again, then you're, that's fine. It's all taken into account. The goal here is not to finish the Qur'an cover to cover. It, it's not to get through the Qur'an in a certain amount of time. It's just to spend time with the Qur'an every single day for that certain amount of time. Now, the more time you spend with it, the better. But is it necessarily, necessarily that the more ayat you read, the better? Not necessarily, because maybe pondering over a certain verse and reading it again and again, perhaps that will move your heart and... and uh, do more things for you than uh, rushing through um, uh, surah or whatever. Um, but I would recommend that you start at Fatiha and go all the way till an nas uh, I would I would not just focus on something you already know or whatever, but uh, that's not a strict thing to follow. Um, so yeah, so that's how you do it. You 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 give it a specific duration. You link it to an existing habit. And you do it every single day. That's the I think the best type of habits are ones that are short, but you do it every single day. Um, so and that's Quran. Another thing might be du'a. I think we talked about on one podcast episode about uh, making du'a like after Isha at the end of your day. You just stay after Isha and you stay where you are and you make a du'a. You spend five ten minutes purely just making du'a, and that's like dedicated to du'a. Even if you might make du'a in sujood and stuff, but you make du'a then. Uh, and then this, so the same applies, right? Uh, whatever good deeds you want to do, it might be a good, these good deeds like would also translate into something like um, checking up on your neighbor like once a week. So um, the way I would do that is, um, well, I use Trello. So I use like a kind of a project management system for all my tasks. So I use it for work, but I use it for my personal life as well. And so I would have like a repeating task there. Uh, where it would tell me every Thursday, or whatever, uh, go and and check on uh, so and so, Mr. Abdullah, whatever, uh, and so that would because I'm using this project management system every day, um, I I've got a list of things to do that day, and it would automatically be entered into that list, and so um, I would uh, be reminded to do that right because I'm checking that every day, um, but that's a whole other thing, a project management system. Um, but you could just add it as a reminder on your phone every Thursday, remind me. And then don't dismiss that notification on your phone until you've done it. So leave that notification there uh, and let it just, every time you unlock your phone, you see it. You know, every time you turn your screen on, you see that reminder. Yeah, like uh, I use like Google Calendar, you could use whatever, right? Just put a reminder every Thursday, check check up on uh, so-and-so, right? So y y you, can, you can apply this kind of same principles of habit building um, to to anything, right? And so uh, another thing is I would not build more than like one, two habits at a time. Um, and how do you know when a habit is built? I would say when you've done it like every day for like probably six weeks, then you can start trying to increase the habit. So go from 10 to 15 minutes of Quran. Um, or if you're doing something three times a week, you know, start doing it four times a week. I would only start doing that after say six weeks of absolute consistency consistency is more important than increasing the amount remember that that's like golden rule consistency trumps almost everything remember we don't want to reach the goal there is no goal here right that when you finish the quran when you finish surah an nas you're just going to open you're going to close the Quran and open it on the other side fatiha and you're going to start right over again there's no goal there's no end uh, we we don't want to reach the end we want to die on the path right we don't want to reach the destination we just want to die on the path we just want to die with the habit of reading quran 
right? Whether you finish, uh, you know, when you happen to die, whether you finish uh, when you're in Baqarah, when you're reading Surah Al-Rahman, when you're reading Surah Al-Ikhlas, wherever you are, that's not what matters. What matters is that you die as somebody who had that daily habit of reading the Quran. Okay, so this is how we balance between hastening to good deeds and um, not getting burnt out. Okay, we establish habits. So we hasten to establish habits. We hasten to be consistent in those habits. And that way we won't get burnt out because like I said, it's only 10 minutes a day Quran, for example. And we only increase it when we've been very consistent and we're very comfortable to increase it. Right. Um, and that way we won't get burnt out. But we're also hastening, hastening towards the good because we're doing it now. Right. We're doing it now. And, you know, when it comes to the more uh, bigger things, which maybe are not habit, like going for Hajj, going for Umrah, um, it's, just a, it's just a matter of rem remind, remembering death, you know, really. Remembering that you could die any time. Uh, it doesn't really matter if the average person dies at 70 where you are. Um, let's say where you are, there's, you know, 40 million people. If the average person dies when they're 70, it also means there's thousands and thousands of people who are dying at 20 and, and 30 and 40, right? So you, 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 can't, you can't cheat this. Like we have to be ready as much as we can. We have to be ready for death. So we have to hasten in establishing these habits. So that's what I would say. This is a bit of a weird episode, I know. It's just me talking on my own. I just I had to get an episode out uh, because I'm aware that it's Wednesday and we usually put episode out on Monday, but... This week it didn't happen. And then I just thought, you know, everyone's got something to say about coronavirus. So let me just share not something about coronavirus, but just something about, you know, the privilege of worship and hastening to good deeds and then how to practically do that. The reason like I feel I can talk about this is because for years I've been quite obsessed with doing this, with establishing habits, with uh, seeing how my behavior works and what influences my behavior. And... Alhamdulillah, I feel like I've been uh, quite successful at that. And I've also showed a few other people how to improve their kind of daily routines and habits and stuff like that. So Alhamdulillah, uh, this, like all our episodes, it's more last, it lasts longer than this current phenomenon, this current trend, right? Um, I'm not saying it's trend like it's nothing and we just brush it aside, but I'm saying it is a trend in the end. It is a hype. It is a news cycle thing. Um, and inshallah, when this uh, whole thing quietens down, what I've said in this episode will last, inshallah, it will last. So, so yeah, I'll I'll leave you with that, inshallah. I'll leave you with some of my favorite ayat from Surat Al Imran, Ayah One Three Three. If you've got comments for us, questions for us, suggestions, go to mindheistpodcast dot com. You can email us, and you find the email on that page. Um, or you can anonymously ask us a question, leave a comment on our Curious Cat. And the link for that is again on that page, mindheistpodcast.com. And here is the ayat from Surat uh, Al Imran. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله ذكر الله ذكر الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ May Allah make us from those عاملين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك